Mary Jane, back to finish reading the second chapter of TG and the Rainbow Warriors. Strange happenings. Achoo! spluttered TG as he blew his nose and added another soggy tissue to the pile on the floor by the bed. It looked like a model of a volcano he'd made for his geography project. Mr Strictly had sent him home and told his mum that this was his last chance. One more outburst and he would have to find another school. If only. Achoo! And now he had a cold that had been made worse by sitting on the wet grass. He was always getting ill. At least it was Saturday and he didn't have to go to school. Most boys would be out on their bikes or kicking a football in the garden or even better for TG's mind, playing on the computer or watching TV. As he turned to reach into the tissue box, he caught sight of himself in the mirror opposite his bed. A nine-year-old boy, small for his age, skinny in his washed-out blue PJs and a faded picture of Superman on the front. He especially liked Superman because Clark Kent seemed like a whip. Really, he had superpowers and could fly around the world saving loads of people. TG so wanted to be a superhero, strong, healthy and admired by everyone. TG reached inside his bedside drawer and took out a picture of his dad. Ever since his parents had split up and his dad had gone to work abroad, TG kept a picture hidden under a book so his mum wouldn't see it. He didn't want her to know he missed his dad so much. Ah! Chew! Another sneeze broke TG's daydreaming. As he reached for a tissue, there was his image in the mirror again. His curly blonde hair needed a cut and was sticking out onto his forehead in tight little ringlets because he had a temperature and was sweating like a pig. How strange, he thought. Do pigs really sweat so much? Poor things if they feel like this all the time. His usually pale skin was flushed and the freckles that danced across his nose and cheeks seemed darker than ever. He could hear his mum singing in the garden below, so he swung his feet over the edge of the bed and staggered over to the window. There was a climbing frame in the middle of the lawn, and T.G. never went on these, that these days. Overhanging the garden shed was a plum tree, heavy with ripe fruit. By the shed door was a basket brimming with plums. Yuck! If mum thinks I'm going to eat any of them, she's got another thing coming, muttered Gigi to himself. He smiled as he pictured her wagging her finger at him and saying, Eat your greens, they'll make your hair curl. Or, if you eat carrots, you'll see in the dark. What a load of rubbish. He already had curly hair, which he hated, so the last thing he needed was to eat measly smelly old greens. His mum had tried to persuade him to eat fruit and vegetables since Mrs Cherry had spoken to her, but so far he'd managed to avoid it. The oak tree next to his bedroom window was swaying gently in the breeze and the red, gold and brown leaves were softly fluttering to the ground. If he put his head upside down on the edge of the bed and stared into the tree trunk, he could make out a funny face of a little old woman. She had wrinkly skin, large wide eyes snub nose and a small but generous mouth. If T.G. half closed his eyes and shook his head from side to side, the little old woman would wink at him. And if he waggled his head up and down, her lips seemed to move. But not today. Every time he tried to move his head, it ached and his nose dribbled even more. And as for trying to put his head upside down, well, that was too much to bear. It wasn't fair. He felt so very miserable and he even wasn't well enough to watch TV. Suddenly his head started to swim, making him feel sick and dizzy. He stumbled back to bed, knocking half of the clothes off the chair onto the floor. Then he heard the back door bang and his mum's footsteps coming up the stairs. <clears throat> she put her head round the door, whispering, TG, you awake? Yes, he croaked back. His mum sat on the edge of his bed and looked out of the window. The sky looks really black. It's such a shame. This morning started out so sunny. Perhaps we'll get a rainbow later. Oh, I do so love them. I always get the urge to run out, find the end of it and grab that pot of gold. She turned back to TG. How are you feeling? Are you hungry? I've made a lovely carrot and lentil soup for lunch. It'll be gorgeous with the crusty loaf I brought this morning. 
you know I don't like vegetables and I hate lentil snap TG why can't I have some hot chocolate with chocolate chip cookies they'd make me feel much better all right dear but TG how can you expect to get well if you won't eat sensibly what's wrong with fruit and vegetables anyway you say you don't like them you won't even give them a try you live on burgers crisps sweets and chips give half a chance if dad was here he'd let me eat whatever I like well, it's just as well you don't see him too often then. He never did know what was best for you. Now calm down, lie back and have a rest, or you won't be better in time to go to school on Monday. I'll go down and get you that hot chocolate and biscuits. She smiled at him and left the room. A few minutes later, she came back with a steaming mug of hot chocolate and a plate with six chocolate chip cookies on it. Here you are, darling, she said as she put them down on his bedside table. I'll be downstairs doing the ironing. Shout if you change your mind about the soup. TG picked up one of the cookies and dumped it into the hot chocolate. It looked lovely, all gooey and soggy. He lifted it to his lips, putting his other hand underneath to catch any bits that dropped off. Then he popped it into his mouth. But what a disappointment. The biscuit felt like cardboard against his tongue and didn't taste of anything. He put the rest of it back on the plate and pushed it away. Turning his pillow over, he took one last look out the window before snuggling down for a snooze. The sky was dark and heavy, scary looking rain clouds. He was glad he was warm and snug in bed. Tiki was beginning to drift off when suddenly a great flash of lightning lit up the sky and shot right across his bedroom. The giant shadow of the tree loomed over his bed. The branches, like enormous hands with long fingers, reached out for him. He screamed. Then it went very dark. He didn't like the dark, so he shut his eyes tight. Almost immediately, there was a crash of thunder that shook the house and the branches of the tree lashed against the window. It sounded like a whole army was trying to get in. The window flew open and rain splattered into his room, quickly soaking the carpet. T.G. called out loudly for his mum, but there was no answer. T.G. kept his eyes shut and faced away from the pillow, pulling the duvet over his head. He heard a scuffling behind him and then a thud as if something had landed on the floor by the window. The Superman clock ticking on the bedside cabinet seemed to be mocking him. Don't be a wimp, don't be a wimp, there's nobody there, there's nobody there. But T.G. could hear footsteps coming towards him. He shut his eyes even tighter and pulled the duvet closer. Mum, he desperately called out. Mummy! As he burrowed further under the covers, a low muttering voice drifted towards him. Drat! I tore my jacket. I just knew I shouldn't have worn my best one today. Then, to TG's horror, he heard rustling right next to him. Hello, TG, it's me. The wind had died down and the rain had almost stopped. T.G. peered out from under the duvet. Smiling up at him were two wide, sparkly brown eyes above a little snub nose in a brown, wrinkly face. The face was just like the little old woman from the tree, dressed in a smart golden brown jacket with a tear in the sleeve, a yellow skirt, brown wooden clogs and a jaunty dark green hat with an oak leaf sticking out of it like a feather. The little person giggled. Don't you recognise me? You stare at me often enough. It's quite off-putting, you know, especially as most of the time I'm looking right up your nose. Now, come on, we haven't got much time. Put on some clothes and follow me. I'll wait by the window. TG got out of bed. In a daze, he picked up his jeans and Superman's sweatshirt from the floor. His visitor was looking out of the window, bouncing from one foot to the other. Hurry up, TG, it's nearly here, she said urgently. Timing is very important. Seconds one way or another and we'll miss it. T.G. was frankly gro frantically groping for his trainers when suddenly he stopped. What was he doing? Who did this old lady think she was barging into his room and bossing him about? He put the trainer he'd found down. Who are you? he asked. Oh, silly me, of course. I should have mentioned myself sooner. My name is Granny Genome, but my friends call me Granny G. It's less of a mouthful. You're Terry Grant, TG for short, aren't you? All TG could do was nod his head with his mouth open. 
So Granny G continued. I've come to give you some important, an important message. The forces are just right today. They've given me a chance to come and talk to you. Come on, we must be quick or we'll miss it. While they'd been talking, the sun had come out from behind the clouds and a watery sunlight was streaming in through the window. On the floor under the window was a square of light that looked like a rainbow puddle. As she spoke, Granny G jumped into the middle of the rainbow square. She stood there shimmering in the light, beckoning to him urgently. Without thinking, T.G. grabbed his trainers and jumped in after her. Immediately, they were lifted off the ground on a platform of rainbow light that floated up out of the window and into the tree. Granny G looked up. T.G. sorry, looked up and stunned. The light was surrounding them and Granny G was dancing up and down, grinning and shouting. We caught it, we caught it. Doesn't last long for you, no. Either Granny Genome had grown or T.G. had shrunk because he was able to look straight into her face now. Stairs had appeared in the rainbow and they were standing side by side. It was just like an escalator. Granny G explained that it was called the Rainbow Light Stairway. As the strange escalator glided slowly upwards, they passed through the branches of the tree and out into the sky above. When he looked down, he could see the roof of his house and the garden and the end of the rainbow going in through his bedroom window. He sat down and put on his trainers. This is your lucky day. You found one end of a rainbow, laughed Granny G as she clapped her hands and started jumping up and down. This doesn't happen to many people. It means you have a serious lesson to learn in life. So most of the trip, so make the most of the trip. When we get to the pot of gold at the other end, look into it and find out what's in there for you. T.G. was so excited he could hardly breathe. You mean I'm going to find the pot of gold? And there's something in it for me? Granny G nodded. This is the good bit, she beamed. When we get to the top, sit down quickly, because the stairs disappear and we'll slide down to the bottom. It's brilliant! T.G. had never heard an old lady talk like that before, and he stared at her in disbelief. When they reached the very top of the rainbow, T.G. risked a peek over the edge. They were so far up he could hardly see the ground. The houses and gardens below looked like a toy town, and the people walking about were like little ants. T.G.'s stomach churned, and he had a funny tight feeling up the back of his legs. He mustn't let go, so he gripped the handrail harder. He really couldn't understand why this was such a good such the good bit. It was terrifying. Tears were beginning to prick the back of his eyes. Why had he left his nice warm bed? He wanted to go home. Just as he was going to shout to Granny G and demand to be taken back, there was a loud grinding noise as the stairs started to disappear. For a moment, they were suspended in mid-air. That's it, I'm going to die, thought T.G. And a tear ran down his cheek. Granny G put her hand on T.G.'s shoulder and bellowed, Sit! Now! He sat. It was the most exciting, thrilling, tremendous experience T.G. had ever had. He was whooshing down the rainbow, enveloped in sparkling, multicoloured light as the wind rushed through his hair. Granny G was shrieking with laughter. Her legs were waving in the air as she struggled in vain to stop her skirt from flying up and revealing a pair of enormous red bloomers. They gently hit the floor and rolled over on the grass in a large empty field. Granny G picked herself up, smoothed down her skirt, put her hat straight and let out a great whoop. Woo! She was standing beside an enormous golden cauldron. This cauldron pot holds an important secret, she told him. T.G. was confused. When he'd heard stories about the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, he'd always imagined a small black pot full of gold, not a giant golden cauldron. What could be in it? Bursting with anticipation, with a beam from ear to ear, he ran to the cauldron and peered over the rim. Oh, what a disappointment. Shining up at him were hundreds of multicoloured vegetables and pieces of fruit. Red, orange, yellow, green and blue ones. In fact, all the colours of the rainbow. T.G. stared at Granny G in disbelief. Is this some kind of stupid joke? The very worst things I could find at the end of a rainbow are fruit and vegetables. I hate them. 
Granny G smiled. Oh, T.G., if you only knew what great treasure there is in that pot. Hopefully you'll understand before we return. T.G. was annoyed. He felt tears start to tingle and burn. A tiny voice in his head told him not to lose his temper in front of Granny G. He began to count to ten, clutching his fists and taking deep breaths. One, two, three. But it was too late. Before he knew it, he'd kicked the cauldron as hard as he could. A sharp pain shot up his toe and into his foot. Screwing his eyes up tight and hopping up and down, he tried to rub it. Through his pain, he heard a strange thrumming noise coming from the cauldron. It got louder and louder. He opened his eyes and stood and stared. The cauldron had started to move. Well, I hope you enjoyed that chapter. And I expect you've noticed Granny Jean in the cauldron are sitting behind us. Toe power, fighter power makes you feel just great.